look at who we are going to have today. So Reverend Sharon, if you would like to start the recording, yep. I'll officially, you know, when it's recording, then I'll. It's, re okay. it's recording, we're recording. Okay, so then I officially call this town hall meeting to order and let's have Reverend Sharon lead us in a prayer. Okay, well, just invite you to close your eyes for a moment so that we can simply feel each other's presence. We know that all power begins in that unseen realm of the ethers of that divine consciousness, divine mind that operates within each and every one of us. Take a deep breath. We bring in a practice that we did yesterday at HeartMath, visualizing ourselves breathing through our heart, keeping us heart-centered, but this is where the true wisdom and intelligence of God operates from our heart. So we stand on this precipice of great excitement, great creativity, incredible imagination. We do so only because we have this deep connected heart sense that we are so much better together and that together we are the instrument of spirit working to create an extraordinary community. So for this time together, for the many ideas, the gifts, the love, the connection, we say, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So um, let's, you want to go ahead and bring up the PowerPoint then? Yep. Now, do you know how to adjust your screen so that you can see the writing as much as you need to see it? How? No. no. Um, okay, so up on top of where your picture is, there are little, um, there's a little line, a square box, two square boxes, and then nine square boxes. That says yeah. how many pictures you're going to see. So if you just want to see the speaker, click on the square box. And then that will, t and you can drag that box smaller or larger. Um, where is that? Where your picture is, right across the top of your picture. Sort of like the film strip that you see there on the right. It's up on the top. Oh, where it says view? Yes. I don't huh. hear it. Bad. Oh. Um, it's a matter of just hovering your mouse over it. I'm going to stop. So on, on the big black screen with everybody's picture, up in the right-hand corner, there's... Um, on my screen right now, there's the little nine squares and it says view. Oh yeah. So if you click on that, you can ask for just a speaker view. And that will just show the one person, whoever's talking, their picture will show up. Hmm. Anyway, if you can't see something, we'll read it to you. How's that go? There you go. <laughs> that works. You got questions asked. <laughs> Or put it in the oh, chat. Oh, all right. Okay. So, town hall planning together. Here we go. So, the first thing, you know, is the current setup. Was where are we at right this minute? Um, COVID guidelines are being observed always uh, when we're working out there. One thing that's beautiful about this place is that there's enough room for us to stay away from back from each other. Six feet from apart is not an issue here. <laughs> We could do 12 feet and still, you know. So the COVID guidelines are in place. Is there more you wanted to add to that, Sharon? Uh, no, we do have a sign-in sheet. Um, um, just And that's for contact tracing. So if anybody should test positive, then we can let anybody else know that they were exposed. Um, and with a temperature, we take your temperature. And, you know, the usual. You've, you've all been through it going into offices. <laughs> Where are you placing the sign in? Out on the bar as you come in? Um, I think maybe on that little table. Oh, just through mm. the door. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Where are you coming in? in? That, that's a good point. I'll bring that up. Uh, go up to the top of the hill. It wasn't in the virtual tour, but it's where that fireplace is. Go up to the top of the hill. There's a little parking space up there, uh, or you'll see the cars. You walk in that door. That's the door that'll always be open. And Reverend Sharon's office is right to the left. And then you're in the, we call that the, the lodge is kind of what we're calling it. 
at the moment. And remember, this is all a work in progress and there's nothing etched in stone at this time. Um, everybody's valuable uh, input is important. So. Okay, any questions on that part? Let me add something to that, Dan. Sure. We have not gotten to it yet because we have been going full steam on trying to get safety issues and keeping heat going and things like this. But we do have plans um, to change the signage out so that when you come in, you can see a sign and it'll say office or right. lodge or whatever we're gonna call it. So you will individually, you will know where you're at. You are here, head that way. Understand everybody? Else I'm just going to ask people to mute if they're not speaking, just because you pick up background noises. Yep. Okay. Um, so then project manager team, Jerry and I are the project managers team. What does that mean? That we're kind of the coordinators. We are not the final say. Um, what we are is a channel so that everything goes through one point. Uh, mainly was for quotes for contractors, uh, coordinating the contractors, et cetera. Um, you know, getting the quotes brought in, um, point person for the volunteers coming out to the building and so on. So that there's primarily, you know, a single entity that channel everything through, okay? Um, and uh, that Jerry is the leader, if you will. Him and I are co-leaders. But Jerry is the on-site man and, you know, and Jerry, hey, Jerry has done a lot for us and helped manage a lot of our buildings and uh, understands a lot of that. So that's why he's doing that. Um, but what's happening is that, as Jerry was mentioning, we're working on safety issues and stuff. As we look at this building, we're finding more and more things that we weren't aware of. And so it's kind of becoming a little bit of an overwhelming project just because there's so many things that need to be dealt with and, and so that's how that's set up and then like it says at the bottom here we're open to input um, anytime you have a question a concern uh, input that you want to put in uh, that's going to all go through me the president send me an email uh, or a text if you can if you want to call me, I will also accept calls that way. Um, I prefer it to be an email or a text just because that way I can keep doing what I'm doing. Okay. Any questions about that? Anything you want to add, Sharon? Uh, no, but I just realized I'm screen sharing. I don't see chat. So if, could somebody else monitor the chat and let Dan know if a question comes up? Okay. So far, there's just the one. So. Okay. All right, let's go to the next screen then, please. All right, so our priorities. Very first thing we got to do is we got to get the roof fixed because it's leaking in the clubhouse. Or we're, we're going to start referring to it as the lodge. Um, so the lodge roof does have um, a leak and it does cause some damage. So that's really a big priority. Uh, there's soffits and things that need to be repaired. So and in our preliminary um, looking at the roofing of that has been decided to just re-roof the lodge roofing, not the, um, the banquet center or the, we'll call that the sanctuary. Uh, <clears throat> there, you know, just for your own understanding, the lodge is up on the hill. It's a two-story structure uh, and that has its own roof. Then to the uh, south of that is the, uh, the sanctuary. Um, so you go down into the lower level of the lodge and then you move into the sanctuary. So we're, we don't need to redo the roof on the sanctuary. Uh, the other roof that absolutely needs to be done is the roof on the pole barn. Um, just be, again, to get us protected from the weather and stuff. Um, so roof, Trees, there's trees that are growing in the uh, foundation, uh, trees that were recommended by our building inspector to remove uh, and clean that up. There's, uh, then we're dealing with the uh, accessibility. 
to the lodge. Uh, that's where the ramp comes into play. There's discussion about a ramp or uh, Jerry and I have been discussing the way we can maybe just make it like a slope from the, the driveway area that just goes right to the porch on the lodge. Um, that would just eliminate the need for going around on the side or where we could build a ramp. But that has not been decided definitely yet. It's something that's in discussion, but it is a major priority along with the bathroom for handicap. Right now, the only bathroom that's available in the lodge is in the lower level, and there is no handicap accessibility within. You have to go down and around the outside and go down. So we really definitely need a bathroom in that space. Um, some of the other things that need to be dealt with, but that's later down the road a little bit, is you know how we're going to put Jessica's office, how we're going to put the bathroom, the kitchen, you know, copy room. You know, there's work that needs to be done there. And partly the reason that we're focusing on the lodge is that's where we're going to do business right now. That's where Reverend Sharon has her office. Um, you know, we don't have any meetings. We don't have any services or anything, but we need to be able to conduct business. Uh, and so then when you need to come to the office, you can. If you're handicapped, you can get into the place and there's a restroom for you there. So uh, the other is deep cleaning of the lodge. The lodge we're finding that there was nicotine and things, so we need to wash everything down and uh, clean things up and stuff. Oh, I see we have a volunteer that just showed up to do the cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's our very first first quarter priorities. Um, some of the other things that kind of go along with that in the meantime, but it's not such a priority, is we're in the process, a tech team is meeting on Monday. We're gonna talk about putting in the sound system. You know, start doing the things we need to do to get the sanctuary ready. But those are not as big a priority. But they are going to be going on as uh, we're doing the first quarter of things that need to be done. So any questions on first quarter? Okay, good. You must be doing a good job. <laughs> uh, in April, uh, June, actually May 1st. Okay, so April and June, that's what we're going to do the priority in this list will grow as we go planting of the shrubs by may 18th this is required by the township uh, we're going to be planting shrubs and some trees um, and we submitted a drawing to the township for approval on that um, that's pretty they we sent them one and it came back uh, with some suggestions for some changes which we hadn't done um, we hired a uh, landscape architectural firm to uh, do that drawing. Um, so when that comes back, but they are requiring us to put shrubbery around, uh, it's like a barrier between us and the residential homes. Uh, so to the right, it comes around right by the clubhouse, or I mean, sorry, by the lodge. And then there'll also be one down by the pole barn, which goes around the one house or property that is right up close to the pole barn. <clears throat> so that's something that's in process. And um, it is pretty well planned out. We know what we need to plant. It's really a matter of getting the contractors going to do the work. We have a quote, and um, we haven't quite decided yet as to who we're going to do, how we're going to go about doing it. Questions? Sharon, anything you want to add? No, it's just that this is a, a moving target. We, there are <laughs> intentions as we try to prioritize and we find new things like everything is um, fluid, shall we put. And we're dealing with COVID during all this too. So mm -hmm. we can plan something and something else could change with the COVID situation. I wanna again stress, because there was some concern that decisions are being made without everybody knowing. Um, this is where I wanted to just give you a quick, big uh, bird's eye view of the whole thing, okay? Um, we are always going to be open to membership input. Uh, all big expenses and things will be presented to the membership at our membership meeting. Uh, the members will always have a say in what's going on here. Um, that's why I'm opening my door to, you know, you got questions, you want to know what's going on, uh, you know, please reach out to me. Um, so the overall picture is to get our place ready to roll. And so we can start having service. We can do all of those things. 
Um, but we realized in that process too that this is a major, major transformation for our church. We are now becoming a campus. <laughs> and we also have had in the, because we haven't been having services and stuff, pretty much all of our teams that we had in place, uh, the team leaders have stepped down or whatever, and there's because there's no activity for them. Um, so there's a point where we are going to want to look at this. And this will be a uh, congregation members uh, committee or something. We haven't quite figured out exactly how we're going to structure this, but we want to do a review of all of our teams and see, do we need to add teams? Do we need to reduce teams? Do we need to, who wants to be team leaders? And we're going to talk a little bit about some teams that need to come up right away. But this is an overall picture. I'm um, what are the teams? Uh, I was informed by Chris Clemens that each team then wrote their own mission statement. So we're going to kind of go back to square one as far as teams go and uh, start that back like we did originally because we are a team centric church. And so that means the teams are the ones that guide us. Uh, Sharon is the captain. She turns the wheel, but she's directed by us, the teams. And so I just wanted you to all know you have lots, your input is very important to us. <clears throat> so then the other thing that we wanna look at is do we wanna change the name of the church? Uh, there's some discussion in regards to that. Um, do we want to, um, there's a lot, a lot of different things. I'm sorry, I kind of lost my thought here about it. Yeah, Dan, Keep I'm going. just wondering, that's going down another rabbit hole. Okay. <laughs> stop. <laughs> right now. Well, maybe okay. on the... I'll, I'll stop yeah. there. I, I wanted everybody to know that there's a, more than just this project as the focus, mm -hmm. okay? That we're looking at a total transformation of the church in, in a very positive way. All right. High priority. Uh, on top of the, one of the top concerns is making the office area accessible and functional for everyone. That's where the ramp to the lodge comes in place and adding the bathroom. Any questions there? Okay. Building inspection. These are items that were brought up in the, um, from our inspector that we had as part of the purchasing process. Uh, the roofing, we talked about new roof and repairs. Uh, the soffits and so on on the lodge and the pole barn, tree removal, I talked about that. Uh, there's a sump pump in the basement that needs to be replaced, uh, repairs to the lodge bathroom. Um, there's a lot of drains that need to be cleaned out. There's a tremendous list. And like I said, you can go to our website and you can see the master list. Anything else? Any questions? Okay, uh, I think we're good there. Code compliance. This is uh, oh. the planning of the. Oh, sorry. There I, we are. Okay. Here's where we are. Where are we at? Yeah, code <laughs> compliance. Code compliance. Okay. Planning of the 114 shrubs. Uh, there is some trees involved in that too, because we're going to take some trees down, so we have to put some back. Uh, that has to be done, or at least. In process that week of uh, May 18th, uh, we're promising that the township that that'll be done around that time. So we will be getting that in the spring. Uh, okay, somebody asked a good question about do we have the funds for all of this? And uh, we're going to go over a little snapshot of the um, funds near the end here. But, and it, but the answer to the question is yes, we do. Mm. Uh, but we'll go over it in detail, okay? Um, Decisions on professional versus volunteers. We have to decide what work we're going to actually uh, do by volunteer and what work we're going to, we can just, we're going to hire a professional to do it. Like the trees is a good example. Do we take down the trees ourselves? Um, we're looking at like around a $7,000 cost. I mean, to have the contractor take it down $7,000 roughly, or we'll do volunteers do it. And then there's concerns in relation to that. So, we're going to look at that and evaluate as we go, which projects we hired on, which projects we do with volunteer work. Uh, okay. Then um, discussion on professional, well, okay, and in quotes. Are you saying that that 30,000 is 
the, oh, that, that was in regards to the cost of the um, planting the shrubs and trees. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Okay, any other questions in there? We see we have five. Should we maybe take a quick look at those? Yeah, I, I just did some <laughs> responses. Uh, we have we have a well water. There's a pump house um, that, but that water right now only goes to fill the pond if the pond should go down. And um, and as Dan said, we get to the funds later. Yeah, but we okay. are on city water. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Can I add yeah. something to that? Yes. Can I add something to that? Go ahead, there is also a well that used to feed the lodge. It is disconnected, and so it's not in use, but it is strictly city water, and we will have a water bill, which is good. It's good water. It's, it's more water and light through, Del through the township. It's the same as what we had at the home street water. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's move to the next slide then. So what we're going to do is we're creating a task list for each room and, uh, you know, what needs to be done in that room, we'll post it in that room. Um, and we're suggesting that, you know, volunteers can adopt a room and, and work with the design team. And if you adopt a room, it doesn't mean you have total say over that room, but you can, you'll be the one that'll do the work, get the job done. You know, you might add to the task list, but there'll be a primary task list for that room that you work from. So um, I guess, how are we gonna, or we need to send out a list of the rooms that are available, right? Yeah, I mean, that is just one suggestion that, that could be done. Um, or if people, you know, volunteer and have some time to wanna stop by, they could go into any room and Nan had created this task list, it's posted in each room. So if you do it, check it off the list. Um, so it's such a massive, project with all little things and big things trying to get the best way to coordinate um, just looking at ideas and the, and the best way to do it yeah um we're also what we get about that uh, talk about that in a second so i guess that's you know there's some ideas of like signs and design team and so on so all right okay any more or less i think we move on then some of our general tasks, design team needs to decide the color palette. Anybody's welcome to join the design team. Um, we're in the process of forming that. We're still up in the air as to who's the leader or is that the one Nan? Did you say you're gonna be in charge of that team? Nancy was and we had an aesthetics team and now we have a design team which will probably have sub teams like yeah. signage, different areas. It's, um... I said I would take it on, but I also asked someone else and she said she would consider. But Nancy, who did the aesthetics team before, and I will be on any design team, no matter who the leader is. Okay. Support. It's just the leader would be all the dates of the meeting and do the paperwork and stuff. Okay. So the leader of all teams really are to be announced um, in most okay. cases. Sue's got her hand raised, Dan. Okay, Sue, go ahead. Yeah, um, I said I, I was considering being the leader of the design team, and I think I will. Okay. Great. So, thank you. Thank great. you. Thank you. As long as I have Nan and Nancy for backup. <laughs> and Carol has said she'll join in on that too to help. So. Um, so, so then, Sue, I, okay. I, this is a very critical decision, and we need we need to get color palette and stuff soon before we start doing a lot of work so if you want to get a team meeting organized and set up uh, you can do that um, one thing that we are doing in this case we might consider that the tech tech team is meeting on monday and we are going to actually meet at the location um, there's enough room and space so that we can you know do social distancing and be safe um, but in this case for the tech team, we need to look at the space. Where are we putting cameras? Where are we gonna do things? So you might find that that might be necessary for the uh, design team. To be there? To actually go there. If, if people feel comfortable, I, I think it'll be easier for you than trying to, you know, 
look at drawings and stuff. I, I really think you need to do that. Nancy, Nan? Um, I, I have no problem with, with um, Sue being there. Uh -huh. However, it was probably gonna be a link that you, you know, go, we're gonna put it here, we're gonna put it there. Perhaps a, a small sketch would help the design team on what's decided versus us trying to be there and I mean, either way works, but you know, uh, it's, it's gonna be a decision process. You guys are gonna have to work, work through it. It could take some time. All right. So, well, you're saying, so Sue whatever. gets to decide. She's taken out of the team. She can decide how to meet and when to meet. And we can just support, yeah, yeah. You. coordinate with you. How you wanna have it done. You know, whether you just want communication or if you wanna sit in on all their meetings, I would say. I suggest you give them a budget so they can buy paint and stuff. We're, this is planning the design. Then we need to look it's, at the overall. We're not there yet. Yeah, we're not going to do the actual buy the stuff. They're just going to design. And everything does come back to, um, you know, turned in and presented. It gets presented to the board, and then the board can then uh, present it to the members okay, or the congregation. And it just shows you on this list, like, no team operates in, as a silo because whatever design comes up with is also going to, you know, the tech team may come in and say, we can't do that, or the music team in the sanctuary or the kitchen team. So because everybody uses the building, there's just so much interlap. So we just really need to keep staying fluid on this. You know, we get the bigger idea, we may have to adjust here or there. Um, so that's why it'll, it'll flow through um, the board is, and but also Jerry and I, uh, as the project managers, we need to be kept in the loop so that we know what's going on and, and kind of because we got to have it have a good chain of command or good communication. I like what Sharon said. It's not about perfection; it's about communication. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so that's the key. Um, all right. Okay. Any more comments on this area? Well, I'm just going on <laughs> communication. <laughs> just... All right. Well, let's see. See, I'm a psychic. I must know what's coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Working together on priorities and budgeting, very important. Creating best order of projects, uh, following the COVID guidelines while we're working. And it's it's a marathon, not a sprint. It's that not, is so not a spring. <laughs> Sorry. Spring. It's not a spring. It should, spring. Say, yeah. it should say sprint, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at that. You don't have to be dyslexic like this. Queen of the typos uh, here. <laughs> but um, anyways, that, that is that it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It, it really, we got to keep in mind that we're not really talking about meeting again until when is it? June? Is that right? Well, we said we'd, if, we'd reassess at the end of February. And we are the this kind of the Sunday people, the Sunday team people, are really looking at if there's any way we can pull it off to do an outdoor service for Easter. Mm -hmm. But you know, this, these new strains have come up, the infection rate has increased. We know that we didn't have the reserve of vaccine, COVID vaccine that we thought was out there. So, you know, if we, I'm praying for good weather for Easter because it's the first week in April and it'd be great if we could do something that was outside where we could easily distance and have fresh air. But uh, God, who knows? It, Right. And then there's also eventually when we get ready, we're going to have a grand opening event where we consecrate the church and uh, we're talking about so good, possibly, you know, there's a lot of possibilities for it. Cool. Um, <clears throat> there will be some type of event. We'll invite the township and we'll invite the whole neighborhood, you know, to come and, and see it. So. But it, the main thing is we're not in a hurry. So we're going to take our time. We're going to do this. There's a lot for us to figure out. Just the operation of the building alone. It's not a building anymore, it's a facility. There's lots and lots of things. You know, Jerry found water running out on the ground and it's like, well, where's the where's the valve to turn it off, you know? And so Jerry and I had to scurry around and we finally figured it out. But there's just a lot of learning going on here. You know what else I was telling Reverend Sharon earlier is that when we were doing dealing with after the fire and stuff, we had to learn a lot about zoning and we were, it was a steep learning curve and we we're working on it, but it was always in crisis and in kind of a battle. Here, it's learning about positive things and about how to use and get the most from our, our campus. Base. 
so gracefully gotten. And what a, what a gift, huh? Yeah. Okay. Any oh, other here's, questions? On? Oh, sorry. Question, somebody? Yep. Yeah, actually, I do. Um, you know, I was questioning if you guys had discussed recreating a bookstore. And if you do, I am more than willing to do that. I will take it up again. But that I, last time I left that job, I had a lot of things in question that weren't being addressed. And that's why I stopped doing it. I felt very uncomfortable. So uh, we just need to iron out those particular things that I found out. And, um, but I, I would really like to be involved with the bookstore again, if you want me to. Okay. Yep. Super. It hasn't been discussed, but I think it's, the, I've thought about it myself. Would you take out the library people. too, Lisa? Oh, what do you mean by the library? <laughs> well, oh, the same thing. Everybody <laughs> well, thinks it's a library. Well, no, yeah. also we've had you know, a couple of small donations of books, but there's been talk about getting the library rebuilt with, especially with Unity Classics and um, anyway, we'll yeah. talk about it later. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, I have a question here for you. Um, here's my thought. I'm wondering if we shouldn't be looking at opening our church sooner. And the reason I'm saying that is that a lot of churches are now in process. They are open. And with the size of our sanctuary, it, I don't think it's unrealistic that we do social distancing um, Everyone, of course, would have to wear masks. We'd have to take, you know, the COVID rules into um, allowances. But I know a number of churches that are on. The one thing usually they have to do is, is call and make a reservation. So, you, you know, you don't have too many because you're going to only have so many seats. But I thought that was one of the wonderful things about our sanctuary. It's big mm -hmm. enough. We could seat people every other pew and they, you, we could socially distance them apart. And you could still make the uh, the the guidelines in place. Um, anyway, I would like to see us move our um, move our time frame up a little bit when we start having social get-togethers. Because as long as we monitor and follow the guidelines, I think we would be okay. That's that's my personal opinion. I don't know what anyone else thinks on that, but I I think the look as far out as we're looking. Um, we're going to have this COVID for a long time and we're going to have, it's even going to get more complicated. And sooner or later, we're going to have to take the bite, open our church and let's say, let's go forward, but we're going to live in a new reality today. And that new reality is it's going to be masks, even when we get the vaccinations, I mean, the vaccines. So things for our world are really not going to change in the, in the next year. We're the one that's going to have to change our behaviors and we're the one that's going to have to change our processes. And so if you're waiting for it to be safe, I think that'll be about five years out, you know? So that's just my thought. Well, okay. and, and I agree, I think, go ahead, Sharon. I just want to address a couple of things. One, the, one thing, one of the teams we're going to need before we meet again is a safety team. And as we had looked at this before, how can we open safe, safely? And we need a group of people to take that on. We need to do contact tracing. We can't give on that. We need to demand um, masks or else you have to leave the building. Um, you know, there's a, so we need a team that, that does that. The other thing is you said pews. And I am pretty well convinced that when we open, we're not gonna be in pews or in rows, but we'll be at tables. It'll be a way of ensuring um, distancing, social distancing. We have the tables there, they're round tables. We put four chairs at a table max. And it just, it's a way to help everybody keep spread out. That's so great. It is an, uh, going to be brought up at the board, I think. Did we say February? End of March was, we'd, we'd, oh, right okay. now we're close to the end of March. So this would come up uh, probably at the end of February, even at our annual meeting. It would probably be a really good place to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody, Sue, Sue, you're waving your hand there. Yeah. I think Sue's trying to get our attention. No, your hand, your hand's <laughs> still raised. Hand. Okay, yeah. speak to the hand. <laughs> Do you know how to put it down? Okay, but Kay, I hear what you're saying. I think that that's something that should be looked at. Um, we're meeting again 
uh, at the end of this month. And then we were also, um, you know, it's something we, we should look at. I agree with you. It, it, Thank because, you, Bishop. I'm sorry. You know, one thing that's beautiful about our uh, sanctuary is that it is, we <laughs> could actually start holding service tomorrow if we really wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, we've got chairs, we've got podiums, we've got everything in place. So uh, one thing that does concern me, though, is that we have to get, we haven't got an official um, from the township that they are that we can open to uh, activities. Right now, we are prohibited from doing that. Um, part of it is the um, planting, and uh, we're waiting for the final special use permit that we got to get from them, which this is not like months away, okay? This is like weeks away. But um, so that's one of the other things that needs to be looked at is what mm -hmm. they're going to require us to do. But now, one of the impact I, of COVID is that, um, for example, filing our deed, because not everybody's working in the office, normally be done overnight. Now it takes a couple of weeks for the ownership yeah. going through. We've got everything submitted to the township, uh, the drawings and everything that they've asked for. And now we're just waiting for them to respond. Mm -hmm. has some things there. Did everybody get a chance to look at no, the final? Maggie, Maggie has her head, okay. hand up. Go ahead. Maggie Bishop. I would agree with Kay. We're going to be doing COVID for a very long time. And I would be glad to work on the safety team ah. having a nursing background. Um, I don't know that I want to take charge of it because I still work full time, but this is going to be a long time. We're in I for agree. the marathon, I'm afraid mm -hmm. to tell you. Mm -hmm. Thank and you. I do think that waiting till the summer is going to be way too long to be well, able I'm, to be in. Yeah. yeah. I'm really hoping for Easter. We can do it safely. Mm. It, by the way, the sanctuary room, the, the banquet hall, has an incredible um, air exchange built into it, where it draws air from the outside and move, removes air from the room. Because we're finding out that it's not surface contact that spreads the COVID, it is the aerosol spray. Um, and that hangs in a room, it can hang for three hours after somebody's left. So that's yes. Yeah, so the ventilation system has the ability to move all the air out and bring in new air uh, on a really rapid and fast way. So. Which might be that a little hard to do right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, you heat it too. You can move the air, but you can heat it as you're doing it. <laughs> but that's why, like, when you it's built because it was a banquet hall, and when you think about it, when you have many people, in fact, it was built when you could smoke inside. So it, that's why it has that air exchange system that it does. You know, you can have 300 you know, people in there and all be breathing clean air. Yeah. Okay. Can I make one other comment here? Yep. And then I <clears throat> Dan? Yes. Oh, I was going to say, I, I would work with um, <clears throat> Maggie on the safety team, but I'm probably going to be gone for a couple months, you know, over the... Um, over the spring, so I wouldn't be able to take a leadership on it. I'd work with it, you know, in the initial stage when we get back, but I'll probably be in Florida for <clears throat> maybe three months. The other thing I'm really interested in working on, though, was in an outreach team where <clears throat> when we get ourselves back into service and we start having some regular um, uh, activities and we're, we're a little further down the road, I'd like to put some kind of outreach together where we put together a packet and go into our neighborhood and invite them into the church and do kind of like a social outreach where, right. where we start to say to people, hey, we're new here. Here's who we are. Could you, would you join our church? We'd love to have you. Uh, and put some kind of process together where we can start to uh, and, you know, expand our uh, congregation, because I think it's a great opportunity for us moving into a new neighborhood area uh, to bring people into it and to show them that we're interested in being good neighbors, but we'd also like to have them as part of our congregation. Right. Well, just so you know that the board um, had a uh, evaluation of uh, Reverend Sharon and uh, we, we really did a great way because we evaluated her, but we also evaluated the board and each other. Uh, it was a very great exchange. 
but out of that came some uh, goals or priorities. And one of the top priorities was just what you're talking about, to reach out to our neighbors in the community and let them know who we are and, and uh, how to contact us if they need us. So, And while I'm on that subject, um, also at that, um, Reverend Sharon has agreed to sign a contract with us for another three years. Oh, great. That's Yay. the best. Yay. <laughs> we got her All locked right. in. <laughs> we gave her a little money. We had to bribe her, but she didn't <laughs> <say that. laughs> She's wonderful. Yay. That's if we don't kill her before her time's up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, well, we're grateful, Sharon. We are grateful to have you. That's for sure. Absolutely. I'm great. Yeah, you know, thanks for everything. Thank you. This shows it doesn't matter what age you are. It's never you're never too old to start something new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've never been involved with a community that bought um, the promised land. You know? <laughs> well, there's there's a calling on your life. There's a calling on you. Yeah. yeah. So. Just, um, just to change, uh, Jerry. Just one second. I wanted to. Lisa, did you have a question, Lisa? No, I did a okay. thumbs up when you said. Oh, no, oh, Lisa Hastings. Did you have um, actually, I did, Dan. Um, okay. Has there been any talk about having a nursery in the plans? You know, these are all, yeah, you know, I mean, like, there's so many things we want to have discussions mm -hmm. about. And at our general membership meeting, we're going to kind of start to shape that out as to, okay. you know, what can we do? I mean, like, like somebody said a community garden, we could make the pole barn on a pavilion a labyrinth, um, mm. daycare for kids. I mean, yeah. you know, community <laughs> meetings. I mean, we're, we just got a plethora of, of Don't things. Don't forget the pickleball court, Dan. Oh, pickleball court, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, also, while I'm on that subject, while we're on that, we own two golf carts. Yay. We bought and they two run. Golf carts, and they run. <laughs> All right, Jerry, you had your hand up and wanted to make comments. I just want to tell everybody how grateful I am to have you as my friends and tomorrow we're going to a few of us are getting together over there we're going to do some work and if any of you want to come and take a tour you just come on over we'll let you wander around on your own I'm not going to be able to maybe interrupt what I'm doing because I've got a couple things that I have to be there for vendors we're getting a piano donated to us Jeff has played it he likes it I don't know anything about it. I hope it's a light piano because I don't move pianos. But uh, I we're we're just so blessed, and I'm blessed to have each and every one of you volunteering like this to be on all these committees and do these things. Because we're gonna do we're on our way to something greater. Remember those ink pens we used to have when we were Unity of Greater Lansing? Mm -hmm. Well, we're there, folks. What they say we're well we're well on our way to something greater this is the most fabulous facility and yes we had some challenges this week and they were wonderful some of them were even self-inflicted we adjusted the operator or me and the heat came back on you can't run air conditioning in january you gotta have a lot of heat I didn't know the thermostat, but I know it now and it won't happen again. It's fun, folks. It's really fun. So come over and join the fun. Jump in, get your hands dirty, bring rubber gloves. We've got plenty of cleaning supplies. There's lots to clean. There's a lot of cigarette smoke. They used to smoke in there. We want to clean it all up and make it ours. Thank you. All right, Chris, I'm Mac and Hill, just one second. Uh, the other thing that we need is we need someone that would like to become the volunteer coordinator. As a volunteer <laughs> coordinator, what your job would be is to, anybody that wants to volunteer, they contact you, and then you're the one that would say, okay, this is your tasks, whatever, kind of help coordinate that. Jerry okay. is still the mastermind behind it, but somebody that will help coordinate the, the volunteers coming and going because we got to make sure we don't get too many people in the building at one time. Or so, you might know that right away something that needs to be done if somebody contact, like be really important right. to coordinate with Jerry. Um, right. Jerry could be getting quotes from a contractor and you got somebody coming out, you need somebody to. Yeah. 
we're, this is, is what we're thinking place? right now and no things could change at any time so i hope everybody realizes most of this is very fluid right so if anybody would like to do that we would really like to hear okay chris yeah um i'll volunteer to uh research the types of um handicap ramps okay and like and and get information on that that to give to the board so they can then you know okay. a ramp yes. for one we build ourselves or one that is like jerry was talking i'll see start, what i can track down on that stuff start at rampit.com i'll talk to you later okay we're also discussing the possibility of building it up right yeah versus, yeah so okay question anybody else here Oh, Marilyn, Justice, trying to Marilyn talk, can't you, see you. We can't hear you. You're on mute. Um, mute but, um, I'll unmute you. I'm not seeing Marilyn on my list. There you go. All right. I okay. didn't want to ask a question. I was just waving my hand. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Well, I was so, questioning, what's the status of the old building? Oh, okay. Good question. Um, Thank you. I had a realtor that's been really Maybe diligent. Nancy could. Maybe, Nancy, 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 go ahead. I can, I can fill in on that. We have Thank had you. nine, nine people have, um, or customer or potential oh. buyers have oh. uh, looked at our building. We, she's working right now with one and expects to have an offer come in shortly. Oh, wow. Good. I didn't even know that. I didn't so know that either. I just got that information today. So. Like a good offer, more than a dollar? Yep. <laughs> I think so. We'll see. So hopefully, I'm hoping within the next week, we will see something. Excellent. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Nan? Nancy, um, I think Nancy had her hand up first. Nancy Clayton. Uh, I, don't, I don't know where this fits. Um, is there going to be a security system in the building? There is already a alarm system in the building. Is that what you're talking about? Well, it is. Um, I live in Holt and I know there have been a lot of car break-ins mm -hmm. and we're kind of secluded back there off the road. And I just wondered if there was a security cameras or anything uh, planned. There was a security camera system there um, that needs to be looked at. Uh, there is an alarm system now um, so it, it doesn't call the police, but it does set off a large noise, hugely large noise. Um, it can be set up to go to the police department. Mm -hmm. It also is nice that if the uh, lodge door is open, a little chime goes off. And I think that happens with the uh, banquet room door, banquet or the sanctuary door too. Any, any door anybody comes in, it sets off a doorbell, ding dong, just like when you come into this thing here. So I was in there the other day working and the thing went ding dong. And I looked and nobody was there. But I started checking doors and I couldn't find anybody. So it's kind of spooky too. <laughs> well, there's a couple, as far as, the, so the internal alarm system, we're not, we own the system. It's, we can pay for a service if we want to. So we'll have to look at that. Um, Number two, we do have an alarm system set up for fire. There is a fire suppression system in the banquet hall. Um, and this goes directly to Delau. They call the police department before they even call one of us from the church. Uh, so we have that. Um, there's also lights in the parking lot. One of, there's three sets of different kinds of lights. One is through BWL, kind of like we had at Home Street, that big light that was always on in the parking lot. Uh, two big lights flood the parking lot. There's two that are hooked up through the pump house that are lights, and there's two other ones. So there's six parking lights that I think kind of deter. Steve said he hasn't had problem there other than sometimes um, finding college kids drinking beer or high school kids drinking beer underneath the pine trees in the nicer weather. But, we'll, you know, we'll watch for it. I've signed up for the... Um, police alert so i get it for half a mile around our building what's happening so i get a report or anything happening that close on there mm. and i yeah so the light having the lights on at night i think are really important 
Mm-hmm. Nan? Go ahead, Nan. Okay. Um, because we've been focusing mostly on the lodge at this point in time, um, I've made the signs for different uh, jobs that can be done and they're posted throughout the lodge. Have not done any signs for the sanctuary area, the big banquet hall area. Um, I will be putting up a few, but we need to concentrate mostly on the lodge. I would like to be the leader of the kitchen to plan that particular room. Um, we've got a lot of unpacking to do. And so if anybody would like to help unpack, uh, work in the kitchen, we will have the kitchen professionally cleaned. It really needs it. And so until that's done, we won't be doing anything, but we've got some. Uh, that's what I was gonna say, by the way, and I am in the process of researching that. Um, there's companies that are professionally, that's their function. And you pay them for what's called the deep clean uh, mm -hmm. And then also I'm in touch with uh, Walter, um, who is Jessica's uh, fiance, and he's a chef of 20 years. And we're talking to him about possibly coming to train us on how to use the equipment and how to operate the equipment. But um, I'm, since we want to unpack in there, I'll kind of move a little faster on the, getting the deep clean taken care of. Yeah, so we're, we're talking about the big kitchen, not the little kitchen in the, the lodge. Commercial, the commercial okay. kitchen. But the, the little kitchen needs to be clean too. Yes. That's yeah. going to be. Well, and, that possibly is going to be rearranged because the handicapped bathroom may go into that space. A little bit of it, not all. I, and, I will make a sign for the kitchen area. Basically, is a deep cleaning is about all it is. Um, I didn't do that because at the time I made the signs, we had a hired cleaning lady that was going to take on that task and she's not going to do that now. So yes, that needs to be done. Yeah, I'd say deep clean first. And then what they do is when they do a deep clean, it's spotless, it's uh, uh, health department approved. Yeah, we're talking about two different kitchens, Dan. I'm oh. talking about the one in the, in the lodge. There. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't put yeah. it on the list on what to do in there because we had somebody that was already going to do it. Oh, so nice. that just needs a, needs a poster is all. All right. Okay, I see we've got several questions here. Do we want to review those, Sharon? I, I just responded that uh, it's only the top floor of the lodge that's not fully handicap accessible. The sanctuary area is totally handicap accessible, including the bathrooms with handicapped stalls into the kitchen, the lower level of the lodge that is all handicap accessible. The only place is where the offices are. There's four steps going up to it and there's no bathroom on that floor. So that's why making that one area, it's the last area, but you know, 80% of the building, 90% of the building is fully handicap accessible, which is just awesome. Okay. Anybody else? Any other comments? Did everybody get your questions answered? I know we were on the uh, financial screen for a minute. Does there anybody want us to revisit that? Or are you pretty well, much we haven't even talked left? about the budget yet. Oh, I thought we were there and I left. Okay. We didn't um, talk. I just, from the quick tour that um, I, the virtual tour that you did the other day, Sharon, um, do we need a regular size refrigerator? We yeah. Have, that's the cooler yeah. is huge we're not going to use that okay that's i saw that as a as a need and that would be uh pretty in and we also used did you indicate we need like a smaller one for the upstairs yeah uh that yeah. small kit okay we, yeah. now in no. the commercial kitchen too I, I just would say that outside in the sanctuary remember i showed you the bar in what the in the great room uh -huh. there was a bar that's a cooler i mean do we need a freezer in the kitchen maybe that cooler could move in there and then we have a bar, a beer cooler up in the, the lodge that we probably don't need. So where can we sell that off? Oh. Unless we're going to start selling Diet Coke up there. <laughs> and the other thing, the other thing I yeah. noticed. <laughs> well, just one second. That that beer that cooler in that bar is not movable. It's built in and it's plumbed in. Just so you know. Well, the one it's in the nothing. in the lodge. No, down, no, in the lodge, that one could be moved. The one oh, down the cooler, in the, the cooler that's, bar. 
the sanctuary cooler. Okay. Oh, that's plumbed okay. in. I was just okay. And we also have a big. Is it a refrigerator or a freezer that's down in the basement? But it's huge. It's a refrigerator. We are refrigerator rich, but it's all the wrong type, and they're all too big. <laughs> we need a small household style for the upstairs kitchen area that we'll use. Our employees will use every day. And then we need to rearrange some stuff, perhaps bring the big three door refrigerator upstairs to use for banquets. And that'll pretty much cover us. We really only need to purchase about one refrigerator. And if we can find a deal on a used one or if someone's got one in their garage they wanna donate, that'd be wonderful. I got a question and I, I apologize. I brought this up at the last um, town hall, how somebody, when we were doing the ideal, you know, we we're trying to visualize our, our new space and everything. And somebody had mentioned um, having like a, a drink, I don't know how to, it's a drink bar, I suppose, oh, <laughs> um, a coffee bar, a mm -hmm. coffee bar. That's it. So do we intend to use that particular bar area as a coffee bar during service before or during and after service um because i i mean i can't I'm, i think it would be cool to have that little cooler with you know pop let, and, let me kind of answer that that has real good possibilities yeah <laughs> that's going to be up to every one of you i mean i'd be you, willing to help what with you that. want do yeah. you want i mean that 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 has such real good possibilities there's no water in that closet that's the only thing. So to make coffee in that closet, however, we have a coffee pot, we can make coffee and then transport it and set it up out there. And it's just a few steps away from the kitchen. What are you talking about out there? Where's that one there? Sanctuary. Uh, in the sanctuary. sanctuary. She's talking about the sanctuary. Where it says has... no shots. <laughs> Whatever the sign said no shots. <laughs> there's, right now there's a, there's a, uh, a mirror that has Schlitz beer or something on it. Well, that's going to get out of there. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. The, the place that is the bar for the banquet or the sanctuary yeah. could easily, well, definitely be a, you know, coffee, beverage, soda, waters, you know. Hot that, chocolate. Conducive to it. That would be really cool. I mean, we could just oh, even have Keurig, really Keurigs cool. there. It like have bottled water, water and have Keurig. Yeah. It has a little bar that actually rolls out in front of it. And then when they were doing the banquets, there was an actual bar. I don't know where it is. I haven't seen it. I've oh, got it. Yeah, it's yeah, back it's in there. the yeah, it's back in the snack, the snack. We used to be the snack shop. In the I'm lawn. hiding it, Dan. Okay. <laughs> I like it, but I'm hiding it. <laughs> but uh, the other thing is you mentioned that snack shop or the, you know, in the virtual tour where Sharon, where we go out of the great room or the sanctuary into that next little room. That's where the locker rooms are and everything. That area could be made into a lounge space. Um, that's where we could put, you know, youth ed. That's where we can have little meetings if we want, you know, and sure. uh, make that uh, that bar space could become like a little snack bar thing. I mean, potential yeah. are so unlimited. Yeah, you know, there's two wood we, burning fireplaces. Uh, just yeah. a second. Yeah, I'm wondering, just because we're into the really exciting stuff and we can go on for a long time, <laughs> the money, the budget, the money, yes. and then yeah. we can kind of leave it open and and give you the next steps. Okay. Um, okay, so this was, um, this was just kind of, this is a pretty good, but remember soft overview of the budget. Music and live streaming equipment, we lost everything on that. And important to get the live streaming equipment is because we have an opportunity to apply for an audio visual grant from Templeton. We had received it before the fire and so then we had to put it on hold. So we're in the process of reamping that up because we had replaced the total sound system, um, everything but the one computer we bought for live streaming because we want to get live streaming going from our place as soon as possible. The building inspection projects <clears throat> could run in that fifty to eighty thousand dollar range. That's with the roofing, um, tree removal. Tree. Some of the major projects are in there. The lodge renovation projects, the big ones there, it's the ramp in the bathroom. Is, is the real, you know, we want to do some things, put in some doors, there's a window that needs to be replaced, but um, <clears throat> that, a lot of that can probably be done by volunteers. And other projects and equipment that, that might come up, um, 
say approximately $50,000. So it's a pretty hefty budget that doesn't have to be spent in the next three months. Uh, you know, it can be over time, things we wanna have, we're trying to prioritize the projects. So where does all this money come from? Well, ta -dum. The balance of the building funds and insurance money, there's $111,000 approximately. We have another insurance claim. We are covered for loss of building use. So the rent that we've paid both for the trailer and for uh, the offices on Michigan Avenue, I think that's gonna come out to about $30,000. Now we're out of there, we can put all those together and apply for that money. Uh, there's also a personal property clause for the minister that um, I just finally got it cleared with my home insurance. So they will pick up the rest of that. And some of that stuff is, is church stuff, uh, CDs, books, et cetera. And then if we get the Templeton grant, that would be 10,000. So we have $165,000, $170,000 accessible. And then a backup to that, we have, the board has set aside a growth and development reserve fund of $150,000. We would like to keep as much of that in place because uh, we don't know if there might be some lips in covering, you know, we got about 25% increase in utilities from what we had at Home Street, whatever else might comes up. We'd like to keep this as a reserve, but we do have some backup. So, and then beyond that, there's a $25,000 uh, savings account. So we're mm. well positioned plus whatever, we, sanely. plus whatever we get from the building. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> good job. <laughs> the, the $2 we're gonna get. <laughs> we're gonna get more than $2. <laughs> Reverend, Reverend Sharon, yeah. tell, tell them how much the insurance agent said he wants oh, to insure go. our facility for our new facility. Our new facility is insured for 3 million. Oh, God. really? Wow. <laughs> get your head around that number. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that amazing? That's what it yeah. would cost to rebuild those buildings. It just doesn't even include the land. Yeah. Wow. wow. And we got almost 10 acres. You know, what's really beautiful is that we're doing all of this and we have not taken out a loan. We have no mortgage. We own this 100% and we still have money to do the things that we need to do. I mean, we are so blessed mm -hmm. and all abundance is ours for sure. Now, part of that money too for the building fund and insurance is also, uh, we received a total of 30,000 in grants from uh, both PPP, which we'll be filing for our forgiveness on shortly and 10,000 from LEAP, the Lansing area, economic area project. Out of like 1600 applicants, we were, one out of four got chosen and our name got oh. chosen. So, wow. Good. That's super. Yeah. That's, uh, so, we and have been very. Been on that list, right? Yeah. That's well, that's Perfect. included. It's in the money market fund, insurance and building monies, but also the LEAP grant is in there because we didn't put that into our regular checking. So, so far, we've been doing pretty good at making even to our expenses. As soon as we go back in the building, um, our expenses is but services will start going up with musicians and, and different staff. Where's your hand up? Speaking of... Yeah. Yeah, uh, expenses and the like. Uh, Jerry commented the other day that he felt like the um, that fire suppression system had been going for possibly a few hours. You might want to call the uh, water Monday. company. Yeah, talk no. to them about whether or not they, some of them will have a, a clause in there that if you have a one-time massive leak, they cut you a break rather than you have to pay oh, that yeah. the entire bill. Good point. And also with water, we're more expensive is sewer. Sewer is through the Delhi Township, but I want to make sure, I don't know if that's on a separate meter for the yeah. fire suppression. Good. And since it was running out at the walls and not down the sewer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but they're built. The, the sewer is totally based on your water usage. Yeah, that's a totally good good point to make there. I'm going to capture that, but you should too, Reverend Sharon. Yep, I do. Um, that yeah. that's that's excellent idea. Thank you so much. So okay, this is so our last should... slide, and just how to kind of yeah wander it up. Um, 
anything critical, then we can we can talk. You know, Dan, I think just in case anybody has to leave here, that Dan and I were talking today about we should do these town halls monthly to keep things updated, and then maybe do a weekly update on our USCL Facebook page. So just trying to keep people informed of where everything is at, because it's going to be a moving target. Yeah. Yep. I think it's a great idea. Great yep. idea. Okay, so let's see. Look, again, I'll remind everybody, if you have questions or concerns, uh, please feel free to email me. Um, we should put that in the, uh, we yeah. should send that out in the e-news, okay, with my email address. So everyone has it and you can put my phone number on there in case you don't have it. Um, let's see, volunteer coordinator, we really need somebody to volunteer to help take care of the volunteers. Anybody willing to take that yet? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Sharon. Oh. Sharon. No, I, was talking, I, had, I had some other volunteers. On, I had volunteers, but not volunteer coordinator. On the list. <laughs> <laughs> I say, if you said yes to that, you need your head examined. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, we're on the search. Please kind of spread the word. We need to find somebody to do this really soon as possible. Uh, also, or more than one person, like nobody has yeah. to go solo on this. You could have two people. Two people. Yeah. Uh, skills. What skills do you have? Or, you know, do you have like, we know, Chris, that your husband is a uh, nose electric, you know, um, people that what skills, please send us let Reverend Sharon know or Jerry that uh, of anybody that has uh, skills that they can bring and uh, help us um, out because we, we could use any help we can get. Email suggestions and ideas to me. Um, sub team meetings, you know, like the tech team is meeting Monday. And we're gonna like say monthly, we're gonna do a town hall update and a weekly update. What time are you meeting Monday? We are meeting at 6.30. And we're meeting there at the location, at the, on campus. We're meeting on campus. <laughs> I just wanted to know, because I, I won't be there, but I just, yeah. if it, I would be there if it was during the day. I'm going to be there all day. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. Well, I'll take care of you. We got that. All right. Yeah, I don't know what it is about me, but I want to run little stores. So I'll be happy with the bookstore. And if you want to give me the, the coffee bar, I work with, I'll work with Doug to get little packages of food. <laughs> it's all going in my head you know i know exactly what I'm <laughs> you know something that's a good point you brought forth that maybe doug might want to put one of his little vending uh snack things or something possible yeah give us a deal on that there doug i know that's your business mm -hmm. <laughs> well we got to work that out <laughs> yeah, that's like I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I hope the can of worms. I've got. <laughs> yeah. And if you think this is big, this is just getting us ready for when we start planning activities and all the different things we want to do. I mean, the building's going to feel like a piece of cake once the other Imagineering starts. Um, right. I'm going to tell you, we did purchase a popcorn machine. Oh, that's like right. They got at the movie theater. There's also a pizza warming oven downstairs and a cookie machine cooker of some sort oh in goodness. the basement way way down boy Two got hand up, Dan. we just need a hot dog oh. thing peggy, oh, peggy. 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 Go ahead, peggy i had a question about the signage outdoor signage are we moving that sign from home street to put out by the street or are we going to get something new out there to advertise us being there I'm kind of thinking we're gonna get something new. That that one at Holmes is pretty old. Yeah, we need it's something rotten. a little more modern. <clears throat> the design it, team will work we, on that. <laughs> yeah. Also, what team. we can do in the meantime to get our name out there, we can order vinyl banners that go outside. We used to have one at Home Street, but yeah. we lost that in the fire. But we can get a vinyl <laughs> banner um, that can go over the existing sign that's sitting there, so we get our identity up while we're getting every way we want it. Mm -hmm. and when, you, when you order that, remember to order two once you're each side. Order yes. two. 
One and when we put it out there, I would put opening soon. Make sure that we've got some kind of sign up there saying, you know, new home of Unity of Spiritual Center of Lansing, opening soon. <clears throat> you know, so then we can put a date up when we get ready to open. That way they start getting familiar with who we are. Yeah. Maybe it's can a I second tell banner so that we can, we have a banner that says our pertinent information and a second banner says opening soon. So we can just, we can keep using the main banner because last time we Good. took it down when we went to, we, you know, we did some, what do you call those gatherings? Um, you know, where people have booths? Gathering? Like booths. Fairs or... Yeah, so anyway, I mean, uh, reuse it as a yeah. booth or something, yeah. Good idea. Right, use it at the Do you booth. want the design team to take care of that? Um, to get the banner ordered? <laughs> sure, I can give you the contact yes. information. We work with a team um, with branding and also Linda Skillman um, has been great about getting us a really good that. deal on pre-made signs. She works for Staples. Okay, so we've got two people with hands up. We've got Nancy and then Jerry. So we'll do Nancy and then Jerry. I think it was mentioned earlier that we were going to discuss whether we would change the name of the church. <laughs> and if so, we don't want to put a banner up with the wrong name on. Well, it's going to be a while before we, if we do change the name, it's going to be a while. I think we should just put something out there. Two reasons for it. One, let the community know. But it also will stop the golfers from coming in wanting to play golf. <laughs> we had what was it? Two guys showed up the other day. Oh, we've yeah, had three guys. We've had, we had yeah. one guy that's been there twice, and he was the first guy. He came in and he wanted to pay me for his golf. I said, "Well, we're not a golf course anymore. We're a church." He goes, "A church." He, he was looking around. He wanted a beer too. You know, I could have sold him a beer and a golf and a shot of whiskey. I mean, I'm gone. <laughs> and, oh, maybe has got did her you have a question, Maggie. Did you have a question? Um, I had a couple. Uh, first of all, I hear there's a dance floor. We're going to need that for exercise classes, after the popcorn, <laughs> cookies, and pizza, <laughs> and a salad bar for one of those bars, <laughs> so we don't we'll all die of diabetes. Right in front of the fireplace. <laughs> I can't remember now what my other question was, but um, <laughs> oh, do we have somebody that's really good at tech that could make a schedule online that could be attached to the web page to tell what's needed when when somebody's going to be there? Could you sign up for this opportunity? It's it might give people bigger options to look and say, oh, I have this day free and I, I'll give it to you then. Yeah. We, yeah. You know what, on the website, we have a calendar. So we can update the calendar. Right. Hey, we got that, that coordinated and that well-planned that we know these things are happening. So. Okay, so Jerry had a question. And I think, when did you also? Well, I was just going to I was just going to say Maggie had a question that hasn't been addressed about getting from the lodge to the sanctuary or the other way around. Um, is that going to be handicap accessible? Well, there's just if you're in up in the lodge, you'll have to go outside. outside. Right. But that's where the golf cart can be useful. Right. Because you would take the golf cart to bring people down. Right. Does that answer that question? Yeah, that's, okay. I mean, I've heard that answer before, but it didn't get said today. And she had that question in the, oh, in okay. the chat. So um, yep. I, I typed in a response. Make too. sure she he heard the answer. Okay. I just want to tell you. From guys, one to the other. Jerry, okay, there'll be Jerry and then Doug. I just want to tell you guys my mailbox story. It's, I'll give you the brief version. We don't have a mailbox yet because the previous owner collected the mail for the golf course, he lives right next door. So the mailman or, or letter carrier always just threw the mail in his mailbox. <laughs> so anything you've been sending to us, and some people started two, three weeks before we even really even closed on the place, we were mailing our their checks to Unity and mailing it out there. And he was real gracious and brought them over. We had a good laugh over it. Well, 
So I looked up the mailbox regulations to see where we were supposed to put a mailbox and it wasn't real clear. I mean, it said, yeah, but it was more of a residential type situation. So I called the post office and they said, oh, in Holt, they said, we don't service you. They want our zip code. They said, you'll have to go to the Southwest Carrier substation. Gave me the phone number. So I called them, talked to a really nice guy. And I said, I've got a question. I told him the whole story. And he says, oh, yeah, no problem. I'll send you the regulation on that. Well, my question for him was, does it go on the right side of the driveway or the left? I knew all the distances and stuff. So Chad sends me this thing. When I hung up the phone, I thought, he's going to send it in the mail, and I don't have a mailbox. Now, how am I going to do this? And I about broke down laughing. So I had a chance to talk to the previous owner, Steve, because he's clearing out the barn down there. Told him about it. He broke out and he says, I'll get it to you when I get it. Sure enough, one day he comes over with this little sheet of paper. Didn't even tell me as much as what I already knew. So I called this dig and we found out where all the lines are. Next, probably tomorrow, we're going to have a mailbox out there. So send your checks to the Washington address. But it's just hilarious, the government stuff we're dealing with. I'm having a ball. Okay, Just Doug. Them all. Doug's got the floor next. And then Doug Rachel. and Nancy. Well, Doug was first. Mm -hmm. then Nancy. I wonder if um, maybe in your newsletter or something you could put a map because people who are not familiar with Washington Avenue and Washington Road are going to be confused. You know, it's a Lansing address, but it's in Delhi Township. And I, I'm sure that's confusing to people who don't know the area. Okay. Doug. Okay. I was going to say that um, as far as the name goes, I think we, I know that we've already kind of, it's later discussion, but I think we would probably be keeping Unity Center, Unity Spiritual Center. But the only question is, are we going to add Greater Lansing or just leave it as Lansing? Well, well I that's would a discussion say, that we're going to have at the membership. But it, but it's I think down the road. Unity stuff. Spiritual Center alone pretty much that's my guess well and the reason this came up was all the things that were done with the churches merged were compromises you know you came yeah. up to one both two identities came in including the name the branding process for unity where we have the signs and the verbiage looking the same because sometimes churches be christ unity church or yeah. they'd have other words and somebody comes into town yeah. they can't find unity so most yeah. of the churches are going unity and this designator being the city, Unity Lansing. Um, try, yeah. And, and if you ever try to use that full name to fill out a form, it doesn't fit <laughs> well on signs, it doesn't fit well on masks. You know, I had masks made up. Um, and, but beyond that is now that we are together totally as a church, who knows what church anybody came from anymore, which one of the ones that merged. If we didn't have, if we're not thinking about compromise, just where are we today? We have been through an amazing growth opportunity from the fire to learning about connecting with the neighbors uh, at the fledge uh, to not even having a sanctuary for, for 10 months. We are not the people that we were before September 8th, 2019. As a community, we are not the same. And maybe we end up with the same and maybe not, but you know, we, we have this great opportunity to say, look at each other and go, who are we? What, what makes my heart beat faster? What do I feel, feel spirit really moving through me that it's just, this is so important to me. Uh, you know, Lisa found out it's important to her to run a little store, uh, whatever that might be. <laughs> but we have oh. this opportunity. I mean, it's just so amazing to think of a full-fledged church uh, quickened and enlivened in, in such a way that we forget it. We are not who we were. All right, with that said, unless there's any other big questions, I'd like to bring this meeting to a close. And I'd like mm -hmm. to suggest that we end how we do so. Oh, Jerry, you got something to say? No, okay. Um, our, our prayer of protection that we use at the end of the service. Mm -hmm. You wanna guide us in that, Reverend Sharon? Sure. The light of God surrounds us. I haven't done this together so long. I know. 
<laughs> the love of God unfolds God us. Enfolds us. The, the power, power of God, God, God the, the, the presence, the presence of, God of God is within, within us. us. Wherever we oh, are, yeah. God, God, God is. is. And, and all, all is, is well. well. Thank and you. that's the truth. <laughs> and that's the truth. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye, everybody. Thank Bye -bye. you, everybody. Thank Bye. -bye. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.